Hello all you beautiful people and welcome back to the channel. This is a quick off-roading overview comparison between the Big O T4 V1, which I'm riding here, the V2 new release which Alien Rides has, and the S22 version 1. So I've already released my thoughts on the V1 previously in my Is the T4 Capable video, but I'll just go through, you know, a quick rundown of it again. These are the same trails. The one I'm going to take here is actually new to me and a lot more demanding, I'll put it, but it is a very, very fun wheel. You know, I, I do believe that the T4 is kind of like what the S18 should have been if it would have had a little bit more battery and built a little bit better that that wheel would have been a perfect wheel it's light it's nimble you know the tr1 tire it's capable of anything and it never let me down you know, i've never pushed it really hard but it is you know it, it lacks a little bit in its high-end speed and its overall power which they have the molly cell now but it kind of seems like the s18 is being discontinued the t4 here you can see the trail in some of these sections is very very narrow because it is meant for mountain biking it has high pedals for a 16 inch wheel like you stand it side by side to the stock s22 or an s18 and it's the same pedal height however it's a smaller wheel so it's kind of cool that it has that kind of pedal height being a 16 inch however in these very narrow trails that I have ridden, you know, not this one, but countless ones out here, I was a little uncomfortable initially going through this. I was kind of taking my time a little bit, squirreling my way through the trail, but I constantly thought I was going to pedal clip, even though I never did. The power on this thing is, you know, it, it's enough. It's enough for 90% of most riders for your you know, anything with street riding or off-roading. There's times in this where I basically come to a stop or almost a stop to kind of bump nudge these roots or hop over them. And at no time did I think that this wheel wasn't going to be capable or get me over it. And once you got over that bump, and kind of leaned into a little bit it went you know there was no hesitation like the rs19 there was no grunting like the hero or the s18 can sometimes it just goes you know you you put a little bit of weight into the pads of your feet or bend your knees a little bit and it'll go up a hill without a problem i've had some wheels where you know, you get on these hills like this and without proper pads, you know, really feeling locked in or something to lean against that leverage, you kind of feel like you're having to throw your body weight out in front of the wheel, which is how a lot of people lose their balance, you know, on speed runs or going up hills, is they throw their weight too far over the wheel and they're no longer, you know, they, they, they're past their comfort zone. You've lost it. You're got the wobble and it, you're going down this wheel does not make you feel like that you don't have to throw your body weight out there to get it to go i do believe if you threw better pads on it you could extract a lot more power out of it without over torquing it it can be over torqued but i believe from my standpoint on riding this wheel that you know you do have to bend your knees quite a bit to get to those pads and it does go however i think it's capable of a lot more with better pads the suspension is quiet and very smooth the motor is quiet and very smooth it's you know some people have reported knocking on the master which my master did and their t4s and some other wheels and mine doesn't have any knocking or weird noises i do have a late July motor and I don't know if it's pinned but it doesn't grunt or whine or hesitate or make any weird noises and it, it goes you know I, I haven't had any problems with it there's been no slippage and I, I very much like this wheel 
it is a little bit wider than say the Hero or the S18, but you don't really feel that width. You hop on it and it feels comfortable. You get on it and it feels capable. You don't ever get on this wheel and think that it can't do it. You know, at somebody at 250 pounds, if they were to hop on this wheel and lean, it'll go. It's not going to let them down. For somebody smaller than me, significantly smaller than me, it's just going to feel that much more powerful, which is awesome for such a small wheel. I do think they should make an HS version you know, something capable of 40, 45 miles an hour, because recently there's been a lot of cutouts at that 35 mile an hour marker. I was doing 32 the other night and it had no problems. I wasn't afraid it was going to drop me either, but a lot have been pushing the boundaries of the speed of this wheel, which I don't think it was really meant for. It was meant for things like this, you know, getting you up hills, powering through things that you need to power through, going off curbs, doing jumps, etc. It's a very nimble wheel. This kind of street hybrid tire does a great job, and it's a very capable wheel. It gets good range, it's a good weight for what it is, and it's a great size. It's no 18-inch wheel, but it's an awesome, awesome 16-inch wheel. Even with the stock setup, it does fabulous. So. This here is just kind of the end of the run. It was full charge. It wasn't at 100.4 volts, but it was up there. And I just kind of wanted to give you guys some stats at the end of this so you could see. This is the V2. You can see here I have those upgraded Bagode pedals. I just wanted to give you guys kind of some screenshots to show you where it was at. Both wheels were charged with the fast charger, so I think one was at like 99.3 volts, the other one was at 99.6 volts, so about the same, but not 100% charge. And what you're gonna see for the trail here is the exact same trail. I took all three wheels on this exact loop. It is about two miles, and then at the beginning of each and at the end of each, I kind of tried to give you guys some screen view of where the battery was, voltage-wise, percent-wise, and then at the end, kind of the distance, which is about two miles, and where the temperatures were and everything. So, my thoughts on the V2 here. Um, I can't say that I'm excited about this wheel, which is kind of a disappointment, to be honest. I was thinking with the, you know, six extra MOSFETs that this wheel was going to perform better than the V1, that it was going to feel more capable than the V1, that it was just, you know, it, it was going to do better. It's the second iteration. It's going to be a better wheel. That, to me, right now, is not the case in the feeling while taking it out on this trail. Mind you, I was cruising at 32 miles an hour last night on this thing. I rode it around town for like 11 miles. I didn't have any problems with it. I have yet to off-road it. This is my first time off-roading this one. This is why I wanted to do the V1 first, to feel the V1 again, and then do the V2 after instead of vice versa. And again, the pedals are high, but they feel very low on a trail like this. You can see me, I'm kind of going quite a bit slower than the first video. It, it's not that it doesn't have the same power, it just doesn't feel the same. It felt like the motor made a little bit more noise. It felt like there was a little bit more hesitation. And the suspension, boy, does it make noise on this V2. The knocking everybody was talking about, yeah. You don't really feel it in the left pedal, but in the right pedal, you know, doing these kind of swervings back and forth, hitting those roots there, it's just constant. It makes you feel like something's wrong with the wheel and that something's going to fall apart or give, which nobody wants that feeling while off-roading. You know, granted, I'm not going that fast. I don't cruise stuff like this at crazy speeds. On the forest roads, I'll do 20-25 on stuff like this. It's too intricate and narrow for me to go that fast. However, at any speed, 
Nobody wants to ride around on an off-road performance wheel and constantly have a feeling in the back of their head that there's something wrong with the wheel. And that's how I feel with the V2. You could kind of see... This is where the guy distracted me and I was like, smash, going down. Um, you can see my feet are very forward. They're very wedged underneath the pads when I'm riding. It just felt like this wheel didn't have the same amount of power. I don't know how else to put it other than I felt like I had to push the V2 harder. You know, it, like I said, it's the first time taking it on the trail. It does have a knobby tire versus that kind of street tire. Both the tires are at the same PSI. The shocks are a little bit different. I adjusted this one differently to see if it would make it more comfortable. I think it has more PSI in it and the rebound's a little bit faster than it was on the V1. But it just wasn't there on the intricate stuff. Once you get into these, this forest road type stuff here, you now it's doing 20 miles an hour. It's it gets up, it scoots, it does fine. On the streets, it was doing fine. At no point street riding it did I feel this wheel wasn't enough. But when I was hitting that steep off-roading, I was just like, really? Like, I thought the more MOSFETs was going to allow it to draw, you know, power easier. But it just doesn't seem like it's there. You know, I, I was hoping that it was going to be a kind of in between on the T4 V1 and a Master. That it was going to be more comparable to the S22 with its voltage and 3300 watts. But it just, it wasn't. It, it was a letdown. It, the knocking was driving me nuts. It made me a little uncomfortable. And the power just didn't seem to be any better than the T4 V1. It seemed worse, which is crazy to me, but that's just my opinion on it. You know, I, I don't know if the QS motor's actually better. I don't know if the MOSFETs provide more power, but it, to my knowledge, they're supposed to let it run cooler and let it draw more without as much, you know, heat on the board <coughs> and issues. But, you know, everybody talks about more MOSFETs, more MOSFETs, but this wheel just didn't seem like it had that same oomph. I know I had the same complaint with the RS-19s and the Hero kind of does the same thing so I'm wondering if with this wheel you kind of just have to get into that higher speed to feel that additional power or you just have to lean that much harder. Again I don't have aftermarket pads on here so I don't have anything extraordinary to use but stock to stock I prefer the V1 hands down. You know, clean suspension, no noise. Clean power, no noise. No weird hesitation. It just it scoots. It's a it's a good wheel. The V2 kind of let me down, but I'm still going to test it side by side. I'm going to do the range tests. I'm going to do more off-roading, but as it sits right now, just not a recommendation to me or from me. Just it's just not the same as the v1 in my opinion you know i'm sure others will chime in but i just am not feeling it you know it it, it breaks really well it has the power it's basically the same wheel it just doesn't feel the same to me as the v1 i have spent more time on the v1 but again it's the same wheel so from hopping from one to the other it shouldn't feel that much different but it does the braking is one thing to note on these wheels. They have exceptional braking. I just want to get that out there. Like, going down a hill, you don't have to throw your butt off the back of the wheel or even squat that hard. You just lean back a little bit, and you never feel like you're going to get those wobbles or that the wheel's not going to stop. It will stop, which is impressive for such a small wheel with somebody my weight. And the V2 didn't feel different with the braking than the V1, so I just want to note that. It's just getting the power out of it felt less empowering. It felt, you know, like a smaller wheel in comparison. It's like going from an 18 to a 16, which was just strange to me. This is the end specs. It had a little bit more battery, I think just because the voltage was higher. But, you know, all in all, I still prefer 
the V1 over the V2, and that's just strictly from this off-roading experience. So I'm trying to get you guys the stats there. I know the reflection's horrible, but hopefully you can kind of see that. And here we are with the S22. It is at 95% charge. I did forget to charge it for this video, but it's still up there at 95%, so a, a good comparison regardless. This wheel does have my pads on it. I do cinch my pads pretty close to my legs. The, you know, the power pads are an inch and a half away from my shins, and the brake pads are pretty much up against my calves. And it does have the bearing sliders now. So just as a perspective, you know, I gave you guys a quick overview on what I thought of the bearing sliders in my last video after I put them on, and it makes a world of a difference. After riding the T4 V1 and the T4 V2 with the shocks slightly at different settings and getting on this wheel, you immediately have a smile and think, this is what an off-roading wheel should feel like capable of on-roading curbs you know potholes whatever yeah but off-roading like holy crap the difference is there it's also an 18 inch wheel so it's going to absorb bumps and stuff a little easier than a 16 inch wheel these narrow tracks here that i talked about before with the t4s that i felt you know my pedals might clip on because it's very narrow i actually did not have that feeling with the s22 and mind you this is the first time I've ridden this S22 in quite some time. Probably like a month since the other video last week, and that was the first time I rode it again in like a month. You could see just how much faster going up this trail that I'm going on the S22. I honestly, from recollection, was thinking that it was going to be kind of turdy compared to the T4s and just not have that power behind it. But, you know, you could see me leaning into the pads quite a bit. However, with pads, this wheel felt like it, comfort. That I mean, that's the best way I could put it. Capable and comfort. Like, it, at no point was I uncomfortable riding it in any of these scenarios. You'll see that there's routes that I stopped for with both the T4s that I went right up and over with the S22. You know, I was slowing down and nudging the routes with the T4s. I hit a couple of them harder, and I was like, that's how people dent rims, and also thinking, wow, that was jarring. Thank you for that with my spine. And this wheel, I hit a couple of those routes and bigger rocks, and it, it felt much less significant, and then at that point I realized I could push this wheel a lot faster and a lot harder. It's not so much comfort like, hey, now this is my third time going over this. Again, people distracting me on this trail. <laughs> um, it wasn't so much my third time going up it. It was just that the bigger, wider tire on this, and it's comfort level was just superior that's the best way i could put it it made me feel like i could overcome a trail like this with ease i i went through it faster and i went through it with a lot less kind of anxiety or stress if you would put it that way you know again i'm not a crazy faster crazy rider i just you know like to take these things off road and get to where i can and Kind of scoot around with them but this wheel it, although it's very wide stance and feels like a very large robust wheel it makes you feel comfortable it makes you feel like this is the kind of wheel you should have you know granted out of the box the stock pads suck and you really have to throw your weight over the front of the wheel to get the power out of it but with pads on it and that leverage you don't feel that way so again it's kind of an unfair advantage to the t4s with this having the pads but to bring you back to the examples of just the roots and the rocks when i hit them with this wheel 
there was no stress there. There was no, I'm going to go down or what if, you know, I hit it at an angle and I slid off. It, it just was better. It, it was just better. It was more comfortable. It was easier. It was better. So if I were to take these pads off and do it again, yes, the S22 is grunty. Yes, the motor makes a lot of noise. Yes, you do have to throw your weight out in front of the wheel or get up to speed to get it going. But with the sliders, it also makes a world of a difference. So if this was an S22 out of the box, the T4s would be superior in suspension, hands down, no questions asked. However, you know, like with everybody, we all upgrade our wheels to make them fit our needs. And I feel like the S22 with the bearing sliders and a good set of pads is a better wheel than the T4. But you also got to think, without it currently being on sale right now, for it being $1,000 more than a T4, you know, do you really want to throw $230 for bearing sliders and another $200 or so for good pads to make it feel like the best wheel you've ridden and not really you know for the t4 out of the box being better than this out of the box that thousand dollars you could put towards spiked pedals better pads for better leverage you know whatever you want a better seat which again the t4 is a better seat than the s22 but in my next video i will definitely throw these pads on a T4 and compare these two wheels side by side. It probably won't be the V2, it'll probably be the V1 again, but it's, you know, as a side by side comparison with these three wheels, just the bigger wheel of an 18 inch reminds me of when Marty and I were talking and he said he'd never go back to a 16 inch wheel. You know, I love the T4s, the T4s are absolutely great wheels. But when you ride them side by side like this, you understand why Marty would say something like 18 inch wheels should be the standard because it is that much of a difference between a 16 and an 18 inch wheel. So just my overall thoughts on the two. Again, this S22 may or may not have issues. It hasn't had any for me, but it is within that batch. And these are just the quick specs here of the battery percentage, the temperatures, and all of that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. You know, if you have any questions, drop a comment below. If you know anybody that wants a good comparison, please share the video. I hope that I covered as much as I could between the wheels for everyone and that you enjoy my perspective. I'm going to continue making these videos, and I hope you all have a beautiful day, you beautiful people.